What you're about to hear is for entertainment purposes only, of course. I can tell you how I think it will happen, because it won't happen in the uh, normal course of events. Either the Republican or Democrat political party will nominate a man for president and a woman for vice president. And the woman and man will win. So you'll end up with a, a president, a male, and a vice president, a female. And in that term of office of the president, the president will die. And the woman will become president under the law or constitution. Now you've got to listen to this because even though we are under new covenant, we think, well, Jesus took care of all that. Yes, he did for you. But he still says, fight the good fight of faith. He speaks about spiritual warfare, that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Something that is in the heavenlies, something that is over this nation right now has to be pulled down and it cannot be pulled down by Joe Biden. It cannot be pulled down by the president of the United States. It cannot be pulled down by politicians. It can only be pulled down by the spiritual leaders that have set their heart towards the kingdom, not towards failure, but towards... They are trying to bring order out of chaos. And this is the last ditch effort for them to try to steal the seat and to try to thwart the plans of God and to keep him from fulfilling the promises that he's made to his people and to prevent the reign of Cyrus from happening so that the remnant can prepare Goshen's and bring in the final harvest of the Lord. This is what they have planned, but it will not prevail. God has said it will not prevail. He, they have a plan to bring order out of chaos, but the Lord is going to bring deliverance out of chaos. But understand that there will be shaking and judgment that comes upon the nation. I'm going to break it all down for you guys, how the Lord um, communicated this to me. If you follow my content, you know that God speaks to me through dreams, the word of God. God has trained me in end times prophecy. He has called me as a watchman. He has also called me as the one who carries a mantle for the tribe of Issachar to know times and seasons through understanding the celestial bodies, the influences and the signs in the heavens, the signs in the sun, moon, and stars is how God speaks to me. He speaks to me through these governing bodies. And on this channel, I, I, I speak the word of the Lord and I break those things down. And so I'm going to share with you how God gave me this message um, today. Um, and I'm going to share with you first how he confirmed what he had spoke to me through the celestial bodies. Okay, now on November 15th, we had a super moon that took place on the star Algol, which is the Medusa star, which is the demon star. It is the star that is a sign signaling mass death and destruction, graves, mass graves, but it also can represent wealth. And we know that the wealth transfer is just moments away. So this full moon in Taurus that took place yesterday, November 15th, was a super moon, meaning it is being amplified. Its influences are being amplified and uh, making it more potent. Now in the book of Job, God says that he is the only one who can bind and loose the influences of these celestial bodies, of these luminaries, of these constellations. Okay. Now, November 15th, Saturn turned direct after being in retrograde since June of 2024.
So Saturn turning direct means it's going forward. It was in retrograde, which means it was in essence moving backwards. And now it's gone direct. So now it is back going in forward motion. And it has been, but it has been in retrograde since June of 2024. When Saturn goes direct, it signals forward motion. So November 15th, Saturn went from retrograde to direct, meaning we're going to see forward motion. And it signals that the things that needed revision or correction are now ready to be launched forward. Okay, this is what God is showing forth through the signs of the heavenly bodies is that now things are ready to launch. Okay, God is now moving forward with the next phase of his plan to defeat his enemy and set his people free. Saturn will be in Pisces from November 15th. That was yesterday, Friday, all the way through March 29th of 2025. So we're going to have this significant forward motion from Saturn influencing um, our trajectory here in significant ways through from now till March 29th of 2025. Saturn moves through Pisces about every 30 years, okay? So we will only see this storyline and this type of influence happen about two to three times in our lifetime, okay? So when Saturn moves through Pisces, what does this mean? Saturn, as we said, moving through Pisces means we're moving forward, forward motion, but there's also a common pattern that occurs when Saturn is in Pisces, okay? And this, this is important because God speaks to us through patterns, through signs. And so it's important to look for the patterns, the synchronicities, the signs from God. Okay. Because he, this is how he communicates with us. So the common occurrence that happens when Saturn moves through Pisces is that the party that is in office in the U S elections will remain in office for a second term. Okay. So this would mean the standard, uh, influence or the standard occurrence that happens when Saturn is in Pisces, like it is currently, well, it wasn't in retrograde when the elections took place. But whatever whenever Saturn moves through Pisces, the common occurrence is that whatever party is in office in the U.S. elections will remain in office for a second term. So what just took place? The fact that the Republican Party won is, 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 is not what was expected to happen. Looking at the celestial bodies, no one who understands the patterns in the heavens and understands the this common occurrence, this pattern that takes place when Saturn moves through Pisces, no one would have expected that the Republican Party would have won, okay? And it is because God is intervening. God is confusing the enemy. They expect an outcome. And their stargazers uh, who worship and communicate with false gods and predict, without the wisdom of God, predicted a win for the Democratic Party. And that's not what happened. But if you look at the patterns in the skies, you would think that's what was going to happen. But God is the one who binds and looses the influences and dictates the outcome. And when he sends a prophet of God, he sends the word of the Lord and the word of the Lord shall come to pass. And I had said that Cyrus Trump was going to come back. So the way that Saturn and Pisces usually affects elections is it brings hardships to the party opposite the ruling party. So that would mean it's bringing hardships to the Republican party. And there is going to be hardships. We're about to see what they're about to cook up. Okay. But the story and the influence does not end there. God has a plan and God's plans will prosper over the enemies. Okay. So an example in history of this Saturn and Pisces storyline and how it affects the election outcome is um, in 1963. We can look at 1963 when Lyndon Baines Johnson took over as president for John F. Kennedy after he was assassinated. Okay. It was at this time that Saturn was moving through Pisces as well. And at this time in 1963, Lyndon Baines Johnson took over as president for John F. Kennedy after he was assassinated. And so what the Lord is telling me about this Saturn and Pisces storyline is that Biden is about to pass away, 
before his term is over and Kamala will take over as president. As I was in shock, okay? I was in shock at what the Lord was telling me about what's about to occur. And I know I shouldn't be because he told me, you know, quite a while ago that Biden was going to pass away. But sometimes I forget, like I forget. There's so much that we talk about that sometimes I forget certain things and I get caught up in the moment and what's going on. So God was like, don't you remember? I told you this and it's about to go down because I it was I wasn't thinking about it. I was just so excited, you know, that we got this win. But I knew that they were going to try to do something, but it hadn't click to me what was about to go down but god reminded me right right now today what's about to go down so also what's crazy is john f kennedy was assassinated in dallas okay and it was john f kennedy who tried to stop the new world order and for that he was assassinated and god has been um behind the scenes working things together for the moment and time that we're in now and he's going to push back the lawless one and um i'm going to tie this into the dream that he gave me as well but yes john f kennedy was assassinated in dallas and next weekend guess where i'm going to be in dallas which is crazy the timing and i've never gone to dallas i don't live far from dallas i live in houston but i've never gone to dallas i've I, i'm not familiar with dallas but i'm going to be there for my son's soccer tournament they are undefeated champs now they are going to compete with dallas and san antonio so we're going to be in dallas for the weekend and this is in dallas where jfk was assassinated and so now i know that this is not just by coincidence this is an assignment this is a territorial apostolic uh territorial pulling down strongholds assignment and God has me placing my feet in Dallas this coming weekend. And so it's, it's just, he's amazing. You just can't make this stuff up. You cannot beat God's timing. You, there's no coincidences. Okay. So as I was like in shock at the conversation God was having with me, the, the Lord then showed me these numbers as he's telling me this. He shows me the number 5252. And in the Strong's Concordance, when I looked it up, it means a turn of affairs. It means a turn of affairs. He was confirming what he told me. He was confirming that a turn of events is about to take place. It also means to be arrogant. The They are arrogant against God, towards God. And there's about to be a turn of events because of their arrogance to try to stop the will of the Lord from happening. After he showed me that number, he showed me another number, 4141. And I looked this up in the Strong's Concordance, and it means to inflict with calamity. To inflict with calamity. There is about to be a turn of events, says the Lord, that will inflict the nation with calamity. Judgment is about to come. Okay? Please have your house in order. Get right with the Lord now. I believe Biden is about to pass and Kamala will take over as president for a space of time. And then Trump will take his presidency after Kamala's time is up. I don't believe the Democratic Party will have a second term, but I do believe they will attempt it. OK, Saturn going direct in Pisces also signals that the Republican Party will see forward motion the structures built by the Republican Party during Saturn's retrograde of June 29th up until just recently, November 15th, during that retrograde time, whatever structures were built by the Republican Party, now that Saturn is moving direct, moving forward, shows that those plans and structures that have been built by the Republican Party will now move forward.
okay? And this brings me to the Michael Jordan dream um, and, and the Big Brother Apple commercial, okay? My husband had a dream on October 6th of 2023, and I call it the Michael Jordan dream or Big Brother dream. And in this, uh, the Lord led me, essentially the dream is about the fall of the cabal. And it led me to the 1984 Apple commercial, which is about Big Brother and Big Brother taking over through the media, through mind control, through brainwashing and having a slave society. But in this dream, a woman comes with a sledgehammer and she comes and breaks the television screen and breaks the trance that these people were in uh, under Big Brother's uh, programming. OK, and this is the slogan that is used in that commercial. It says, and you will see why January 24th. 1984 will not be like 1984. And so through that, I had the understanding that God was saying that it's not time yet for the lawless one to have complete control and that the control and the, the, the veil and the um, mind control that Big Brother has over the people now, God is going to break that programming and give the people an opportunity to see the truth and to repent and to receive Christ. Now, January 24th is four days after Inauguration Day, okay? So I believe, because of this, I believe that Kamala will not, and the Democratic Party will not go on to have a second term even if they try, um, even, you know, even if they try because of a state of emergency, they say that this is what we have to do because of the state of emergency. They're not going to win. So this is why the Lord led me to this commercial and why he was saying very specifically that this is why we will see why January 24th, 1984 will not be like 1984. They will not succeed in their one world order just yet. They will not succeed yet. And Inauguration day is January 20th. So this is when the elected official is sworn in to their seat as presidency. And I believe the Lord saying it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. It says they will try to bring their new world order out of chaos, chaos, but I will bring deliverance out of chaos. And then I look back at the notes from this 1984 Michael Jordan dream. And the, at the time when I was writing this, the interpretation of the dream down, the Lord gave me the number 14. And the number 14 represents deliverance, okay? Keep in mind that he gave me the opposite of that 14. He gave me 4141 earlier today, which means to inflict with calamity. The enemy wants to inflict with calamity, but God is going to produce deliverance from this calamity that is coming. And God gave me with this dream numbers 14 verses 14 through 16, which I'm going to read. It says they, okay, so this is Moses praying to God for the people of God it says they will tell it to the people who live in this land. These people have already heard that you Lord are with us, that you appear in plain sight when your cloud stops over us and that you go before us in a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Now, if you kill all your people, the nations who have heard of your fame will say that you killed your people in the wilderness because you were not able to bring them into the land. You promised to give them. We just, the people of God, has have just celebrated a huge victory through these elections because we know that we're be, being given mercy and grace and time to build Goshen's, to prepare the way of the Lord, to bring in a final harvest and to get right, uh, to get his church right. What would it look like to the people to then say, no, it will not come to pass. To then give it back to Kamala, to the Democratic Party, to the lawless one. I repeat. Now, if you kill all your people, the nations who have heard of your fame will say that you killed your people in the wilderness because you are not able to bring them into the land you promised to give them. If Cyrus does not take office, they will mock the people of God. And we will not come into the promise that God has said we will come into. He's bringing us into the promised land, you guys. He's been saying this very clearly. He told me this. 
He told me about the Red Sea moment back in 2019, 2020, the end of 2019 or tw the beginning of 2020. I go on. So now, Lord, I pray, show us your power and do what you promised when you said, I, the Lord, am not easily angered and I show great love and faithfulness and forgive sin and rebellion. Yet I will not fail to punish children and gra grandchildren to the third and fourth generations for the sins of their parents. And now, Lord, according to the greatness of your unchanging love, forgive, I pray, the sin of these people just as you have forgiven them ever since they left Egypt. The Lord answered, I will forgive them as you have asked, but I promise the Lord is going to deliver. He's going to show mercy as the people have, of God have been praying and interceding for this nation. I will forgive them as you have asked, but I promise that as surely as I live and as surely as my presence fills the earth, none of these people will live to enter the land. They have seen the dazzling light of my presence and the miracles that I performed in Egypt and in the wilderness, but they have tried my patience over and over again and have refused to obey. They will never enter the land, which I promised to their ancestors. None of those who have rejected me will ever enter in. For those of you who have been mocking the prophets of God, the word of the Lord, and who have set yourself as an enemy against God, Judgment is coming. <sighs> but because my servant Caleb has different has a different attitude and has remained loyal to me, I will bring him into the land which he explored and his descendants will possess the land. in whose valleys the Amal Amalekites and the Canaanites now live, turn back tomorrow and go into the wilderness in the direction of the Gulf of Aquaba. Um, this is what the Lord has told me just now. Um, be prepared and understand that he's going to fulfill his promise to us. He is going to bring the faithful remnant, the Caleb's, the Josephs, the Davids, the Esthers. He's going to bring them into their appointed positions, into the promised land. He's going to fulfill the callings and destinies of his people for his glory and because he's merciful. But we are about to see a change of events and the enemy is about to uh, attempt to, to to steal the presidency. But God is going to allow Cyrus to take the seat and allow him his allotted time. Not because Cyrus is righteous, but because God loves his people and he will use whoever he sees fit in order to bless his people, even foreign foreigners, even those who do not know him, kings that do not know him, he has used to preserve his people in the Bible. And he still is the same today. And as I have talked about that Cyrus is going to be used by God to push back the time of the lawless one. And so whatever we see moving forward and the hardships we see, know that God is going to provide for his people. Many are going to suffer. Many in this nation will suffer. They will feel the fiery furnace of affliction because they have believed the lies. And I pray that many be refined and come to the Lord through their time of affliction. But for the faithful remnant who has been experiencing trials and tests and afflictions for righteousness sake we shall be provided for and we shall rise like the stars forever it is the time for the manifestation of the sons of god be blessed